world of hiking is one of challenge, perseverance, and adventure. But as with any adventure, it can come with its own set of dangers. Such was the case with Stephen Olshansky, better known as the Otter. In 2015, 59-year-old Stephen Olshansky, aka the Otter, embarked on a southbound thru-hike of the Continental Divide Trail, which covers the length of the United States from Mexico to Canada. The Continental Divide Trail follows the Continental Divide closely, but with a twist. However, there are several recognized routes, some of which are more popular than the official path. The Continental Divide Trail must include a few portions, particularly in New Mexico, which necessitates walking on roadways. The path is on public land, including national forests, national parks, and Bureau of Land Management. As the longest of the three, the Appalachian Trail and the Pacific Crest Trail, the trail completes the triple crown of hiking paths. For the trail, Otter who has hiked the trail several times and is familiar with the landscape and weather, his narrative serves as a warning to avoid getting comfortable with the terrain and weather. There are minimal amenities along the way, so the hiker must typically leave the trail to replenish or locate accommodation. Otter had far more hiking experience than many hikers. Otter was set to cross the Colorado-New Mexico border and undertake the last stage of his through trek around mid-November 2015. He was aware of the date of this journey because significant snowstorms are usually in the Alps in November. According to reports in southern Colorado and northern New Mexico, Otter spent a few days at the house of the Trail Angels Ben and Jill Whiting in Chama, New Mexico, where they discussed some impending snowstorms, and Otter even tested out some new gear while he was there. Otter was aware that the weather might deteriorate as he trekked out of Chama, but he opted to proceed regardless. On November 14, 2015, he was dumped off near Cumbers Pass in Colorado, unaware that this would be his last day alive. He kept a notebook and recorded movies on his mobile phone to publish to YouTube, in his journal, and on his camera. Otter indicated that the snowy circumstances had been far worse than he had anticipated, and that his body was struggling to cope. He wrote that as he stood up, he instantly felt horrible weakness since it was snowing fiercely. He then found a suitable area to pitch his tent. The snowfall continued until late Tuesday, November 17th. Otter was referring to this campground about 12 miles from Converse Pass where he had begun. He rode out the storm in that campsite, and then, the day after the snow stopped, he tried to backtrack to Converse Pass to bail out, but his body was feeling so weak at this point that he couldn't even make it a mile, so he ended up turning around and going back to his campsite because he knew the campground was well protected and had plenty of firewood. Otter was trapped, even though he was in a temporarily secure location. He needed a GPS gadget. He had no spots, no cell signal, and no way to phone for assistance. At this time, he took out his mobile phone and utilized the last of his phone batteries to inform the world of his difficult situation. I'm in a lot of trouble because I'm snowbound. I tried to hike out yesterday, but it's about 10 to 12 miles back on the road, and I can't make it. How could a man with so much expertise walk out when the conditions were so poor and dangerous? He subsequently posted a video expressing he's sorry and accepting responsibility for his actions. Let me just say right away that I made a huge mistake. I should have turned around or never come out here this time of year. I rolled the dice and lost. Otter then details what he's doing to keep himself alive. He discusses his campsite choices, how much firewood he had, and how he was tented directly close to Forest Service Road 87, hoping a random motorist would see him and inform people that he needed help. He then shifts his focus to another possible path of salvation and writes again. There's one guy, Ben Whitting. He's the only guy who knows where I am. And when I walked out the door, he said, Otter, you've got 10 days. Now if I don't hear from you, we're going to come looking for you. On November 29th, Whitting began asking around online to see if anybody had heard from Otter but quickly discovered that no one had. The authorities were alerted in the meanwhile. However, Otter is still stranded. He spelled out the word help on the ground in the hopes that it might be seen by a plane, and he stayed crouched inside his tent when another or worse snowfall passed through. He waited like this until December 1st, when he realized he wanted to do something else. His phone was dead at this point, 
and he didn't have a paper map, but he remembered seeing a campsite on his GPS app about three miles distant down Forest Service Road 87. Otter had slept in the Lagunitas campground's restroom on a prior excursion. Otter eventually decided to travel to Lagunitas campground rather than stay in his present campground. It took a lot of courage to pack up that day. I hiked 200 yards and bent over from total exhaustion in the waist-deep snow, he wrote in his notebook. I returned to the location where I had spent 17 days safe, but in a coffin. A few steps bent over. It took all day. I couldn't move one step further. I was going to sleep in the snow. I looked to my left and saw the bathroom. I shivered inside the icebox, got into my sleeping bag, and cranked up the wood stove for a hot drink. Meanwhile, the search for Otter was finally yielding results. His intended destination after leaving Cumbers Pass was Ghost Ranch, where he had shipped a resupply box. According to Ghost Ranch employees, Otter had not yet picked up his box, indicating that he had either not made it that far, or had simply not been there. On December 10th, numerous planes searched 300 square miles of Carson National Forest between Shama and Ghost Ranch, the portion of the CDT that Otter had been hiking. Unfortunately, the winter conditions at the time made it impossible for the searchers to spot anyone on the ground, and thus, no discoveries were made. On the same day, December 10, 2015, a potential sighting of Otter sent the search in a new direction when a ranger in Grants, New Mexico, another CDT town about 200 miles southwest of Chama, thought he spotted Otter at the Forest Service station in town. The ranger did not ask the man his name, but he had seen flyers of Otter and felt it was the same person. A few other people in town also recognized the man, which gave the searchers some hope that Otter was still making his way south down the route. It didn't make sense to Otter's friends and family since the ranger who had reportedly spoke to Otter stated the man asked for directions to the post office, but Otter had already walked the CDT numerous times and knew where the post office was. Otter had had enough of waiting to be rescued. He then went on to destroy a structure before seeing an aircraft fly straight above him. He attempted waving, but they didn't appear to see him. He was writing in his journal the entire time. He gave up and returned to the campground, dejected. He began making plans to terminate his own life multiple times. He journaled about his fantastic life and all the wonderful events he had in his final days. He died in mid-January from hypothermia, exacerbated by malnutrition and dehydration. Nobody knew what had happened to him for the next few months. That is, until May 2016, when Crombie, a Continental Divide Trail through hiker was post-holing, sinking up to his chest in the snow in some places, to travel to a remote U.S. Forest Service campsite in northern New Mexico this May. After days of roughing it in the backcountry, he was looking forward to the convenience of using a toilet. As he got closer, he observed the burned remains of a bonfire and the ragged pieces of a tarp hanging from the little structure. Until he saw the skis, neither appeared out of place. They were constructed from corrugated roofing tin with hand-cut footrests and twisted bailing wire straps. They were resting against the lavatory door, and in retelling his story, they were the first indication that something horrific had occurred here. Those skis were impressive, and then I saw the door, remarked Crombie. Dead CDT hiker inside. Call cops. Otter. Was carved into the brown pane on the steel door of the toilet. A paper message fastened by a string was also affixed to the door handle. Warning. There is a dead human body inside bathroom, locked in. It is Stephen Olshansky, also known as the Otter. Please notify authorities immediately. This is not a joke. Crombie took off almost immediately, headed for Chama, many miles west. He was aware of the Olshansky hunt. He had seen posters of the seasoned through hiker who had gone missing in December 2015. The Otter was Olshansky's path name. My initial thought was that I should inform someone. Otter is my name. I kept walking and post-holing. It was a rough day of hiking and post-holing. It was wet, boggy stuff. I kept losing the trail, Crombie recalled. He spent a night on the path when an animal dragged away a tiny storage bag carrying a piece of his stove. When he arrived in Chama, he informed the state police of what he had witnessed. State police were delayed for a day due to heavy snow on Forest Road 87. The first state police officer to arrive on Forest Road could not enter the campground because his car became stuck in the snow. 
One day later, four state police officers and a forest service ranger could enter the campground on the backs of state game wardens' ATVs. Because the lavatory door was closed from the inside, the cops used a pry bar to open it. The otter's body was discovered in a blue sleeping bag. He'd fashioned a tin wood stove with a handcrafted stovepipe. He stuffed two small bags with letters and personal items, including a mobile phone, a driver's license, and $22 in cash. Olshansky, age 56, had exhibited his final testament with care, requesting that all of the writing be turned over to authorities. I should have turned around on the first day. According to the state police investigation, Olshansky wrote, I have no way of staying on top of the snow. The conditions of the restroom, the immediate area right outside the restroom, the condition of the body, all show signs and evidence of Mr. Olshansky having been in that location for a period of time, the state police report said. The precise date of his death is unknown. He had been in Lower Lagunitas for four to six weeks, from the first week of December through his death in January. Look for solitude. On November 14, 2015, Olshansky ventured into the northern New Mexico backcountry near Chama in search of solitude. It devoured him entirely. Due to the severe weather, he had only advanced around 12 kilometers from his starting location. He was rendered immobile by a succession of massive snowstorms and frostbite. In his writings, he stated that he arrived at Lower Lagunitas campground on the ninth day after Thanksgiving, or about the first week of December. According to his brother Neil Olshansky, the notebooks discovered on the site recounted Otter's struggle with the snow. Due to the snow and weakness, he stayed three miles north of the campsite for over two weeks, he wrote. According to his brother, he had frostbite, which injured him. Otter braced himself for a lonely period near the Continental Divide Trail in New Mexico, heading south. He departed with two weeks' worth of food, a tent, and a stove. He'd shipped himself a supply box to be delivered to Ghost Ranch in Abiquiu. Through hikers on the Continental Divide Trail spend long days on desolate routes, briefly returning to civilization. They want to shower, eat, and rest before continuing their journey. Many hikers send parcels to their next scheduled stop in civilization to replenish supplies and get new equipment for the unique demands of the next leg of their journey. He disregarded a map supplied by his buddy Ben Whitting, who left him off north of Chama on November 14th. According to the state police investigation, he stated that he would use GPS to navigate his way around. Instead, he stated he used GPS on his phone to locate his route. He was familiar with the route. He loved that time when he was out there by himself, and the world was beautiful. His brother Neil explained. His brother described him as a tough hiker who could average 15 kilometers per day and could post hole, traveling through deep snow, several times. The story of Stephen Olshansky, aka The Otter, will forever remind us to appreciate the beauty of the wild, but also to respect its power. What do you think could have been done differently to ensure his rescue? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below.